Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 87th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. Now to start off, iOS 5.1.1 was released a few days back, and aside from fixing minor bugs, it just brings improvements to the HDR functionality of photos taken on the lock screen, as well as improvements to Safari bookmarks and the built-in reading list functionality inside of Safari. And shortly after iOS 5.1.1 was released, MuscleNerd confirmed that it can be jailbroken with the red snow that's meant for iOS 5.1 simply by pointing it at the iOS 5.1 IPSW to sort of trick it into thinking that you're jailbreaking 5.1 when in reality you're jailbreaking 5.1.1. Now the jailbreak only includes the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPod Touch 4th and 3rd generation as well as the original iPad and that's because it is a tethered jailbreak. So it's just relying on the old Lime Rain exploit that was discovered ages ago by Geohot and that is a boot ROM exploit meaning the only way for Apple to have patched that exploit was to push out newer hardware which is what they did with the A5 and A5X powered devices being the iPhone 4S, the iPad 2 and the new third generation iPad. So that's the reason why tethered jailbreaks recently haven't included the newer devices because again Apple did patch that boot ROM exploit or hardware exploit with the release of those newer devices. And skipping ahead to today the iPhone dev team updated Red Snow and now it not only includes native support for iOS 5.1.1 without the need to actually point it at the iOS 5.1 IPSW but it also includes downgrade support for the A5 and A5X based devices which again iPhone iPhone 4S, iPad 2, and the new third generation iPad. However, you do have to have your SHSH blobs backed up, and it does include downgrading from the latest firmware, 5.1.1, as well as 5.1 to the lower firmware, such as 5.0.1. However, obviously, if you're on a third generation iPad, you cannot downgrade from 5.1.1 to 5.0.1 because the iPad was released after that and the first firmware for the new iPad was 5.1 so that's the only firmware you can downgrade to. However, it's useless without your SHSH blobs which is how Apple signs different firmwares and verifies that that is indeed the correct firmware. So again, I did a jailbreak tutorial for 5.1.1 shortly after it was released on the 7th and I did a new jailbreak tutorial today that includes updated instructions for the new version of Red Snow and I'll have links to both of those tutorials down below in the more info and I also just wanted to clarify something for these jailbreak tutorials and future jailbreak tutorials. If it's an untethered jailbreak then I will include the word untethered in the title whereas if it's just a tethered jailbreak I won't include tethered or untethered in the title and the reason for that is because lately with untethered jailbreaks becoming more complex it seems that tethered jailbreaks are more standard these days so that's why I don't specify in those video titles. Also yesterday on the 10th we had two pieces of great jailbreak news from Pod2G. One of the developers who is actually working on the iOS 5.1 and 5.0.1 untethered jailbreak and he said that he managed to successfully jailbreak the new third generation A5X based iPad on iOS 5.1 and shortly after that announcement he published a video to prove that he was on iOS 5.1 and that it was an untethered jailbreak by first confirming that it was a third generation iPad showing that Cydia worked properly and then actually rebooting it and loading up a couple of different things on the iPad to show that it booted with full function functionality and that it wasn't something like a semi-untethered or semi-tethered jailbreak. However, after that, too many people were asking him for an ETA or a release date for the utility, and he simply said that he does not have a release date as of now. There will not be any beta testing for the utility he's currently working on or future utilities, and that it will be weeks before a user-friendly tool is ready for a release. So for everyone who's been asking me about an iOS 5.1, 5.1.1 untethered jailbreak, whether it be for an iPhone 4 or for an iPhone 4S or even the new third generation iPad. Yes, it is coming. It's under development right now. Pod2G is diligently working on it and take into account that this is just something he does on the side. Now, with that said, again, there is no estimated release date for a utility and I will keep you guys fully updated here on my channel and also on my website, besttechinfo.com. All right, now moving away from 5.1.1 jailbreak related news, the CEO of AT&T said that he regrets ever offering unlimited data plans, especially for iPhone users and that he fears services like iMac message and Skype that directly circumvent AT&T and take away from their revenue stream. And the New York Times highlights an interesting quote for him in which he elaborates on what he was talking about when he says he regrets offering unlimited data plans. So if you guys want more information on that, just be sure to check out the post down below. Moving on, according to a new report, Apple has filed a claim with the WIPO or World Intellectual Property Organization saying that the domain iPhone5.com, which is already
already registered should be turned over to them. Now, even though there's a good chance that Apple's upcoming iPhone will not be called the iPhone 5, in light of the fact that it's actually Apple's sixth generation device and that the third generation iPad was actually dubbed the new iPad. However, with that said, the iPhone 5 is the unofficial name that various media outlets have been referring to Apple's next generation iPhone for almost two years now. So it would make sense that Apple would wanna pick up on that word of mouth marketing. Now, next up, the other day on the eighth, Apple's iCloud website was actually displaying a notification upon logging in. Now that has since been fixed, but it's interesting to actually think about it because the notification system that the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch currently use right now was introduced in iOS 5. And with OS X Mountain Lion scheduled to come out sometime this summer, it will also bring a revamped notification system to the Mac. And it's very similar to the notification system found on iOS based devices. So that in combination with the fact that the notification was actually appearing leaves most people to assume that Apple is actually testing web-based notifications and it could possibly even go as far as having a web-based chat system, kind of like iMessage for iDevices and Messages, which is currently in beta for OS X and is scheduled to be officially released alongside OS X Mountain Lion. And now today, just a few days after that news, a developer portal and a beta portal for iCloud were actually discovered and they're somewhat similar to last year's iCloud beta site. However, they don't allow for actually logging on and they seem to not be appearing properly anymore. But when they were loading, they actually displayed an iCloud login page with two additional icons. So it seems as if Apple is gearing up to revamp iCloud and include some pretty major modifications to it. And hopefully they'll reveal them next month at WWDC. Now, whatever the case for iCloud may be, just be sure to stay tuned for full coverage. And finally, the other day on the 9th, Facebook announced their upcoming App Center, which will be sort of a cross-platform web-based hub in which users will actually be able to log in with their existing Facebook accounts and they'll either be able to download free applications or pay for the applications. And if they're not OS specific, then they'll be able to use them across basically any device with an HTML5 compatible web browser. So in theory, yes, you should be able to use the same applications on Android, iOS, and even your computer. So if you guys want more information on that or anything else I talked about in today's episode, just be sure to check down below in the more info. I have all of the links there. And also don't forget to rate this video up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos. For the question of the day, what do you guys think about Facebook's upcoming App Center? Do you think it could be a possible threat for Apple's App Store in the near future? And do you think more users will start to go over to Facebook's App Center just for the ease of being able to use all of their applications across multiple devices? Do you think it will be something to go along with different app distribution methods such as Apple's App Store? Or do you think it will just be sort of a novelty thing? Let me know down below in the comment section or on Best Tech Info. And also if you want to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.